Man, man, man. I knew that this was going to get messy. I knew it. I knew this was going to get messy. What's going on, y'all? You ready, Don K in here, the all-new Radio on Fire dot com and so um you know during in the morning we talk about politics now in the evening we talk about music and entertainment and um you know the joe budden podcast i enjoy the show and many of you enjoy the show as well so joe budden uh, has his podcast and uh has had it for quite some time uh, you know, it's like on episode four, you know, four hundred something, something like that. Anyway, uh, he's gone through a, a a host of co-hosts, right? Uh, he's changed his uh, lineup many times, several times. All right, let, let me not go too far. Several times, uh, and this latest blow up comes with the the most successful lineup that he's had thus far. Roy and Maul. So he, he fired them. Uh, yeah, it wasn't totally clear that he fired Maul until the end of his most recent episode. But but he fired fired Roy, fired Maul. Uh, did it on a show that they were not on. Uh, they were not actually on the show, right? I guess they didn't. They didn't. They didn't show up to work. So uh, he was he was talking greasy. Parks talking greasy. If, if you watch the show. Uh, Ian, who is um, uh, Joe Budden's business partner, uh, manager, something like that. Anyway, all, they were talking greasy. And um, Joe Budden has since apologized, has since apologized for things that he said uh, on the show. Uh, you know, kind of. He said that seeing all of this feedback and all of this, I do need to apologize to Roy as well maybe roy and maul too but definitely roy uh he said uh on the newest episode of the podcast um and so there was a response i didn't think that they were going to say anything for 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 quite some time talking about um roy and maul so if you have watched the show now some people don't watch the show some people watch the show i do watch the show and uh I have I've been a fan of Joe Budden since um you know since his rap career. I remember him coming to Baltimore. I've talked about this a couple of times. I remember coming to Baltimore, Def Jam he had a bus and all that kind of that that kind of thing. And um uh you know, so uh he's been doing this for a while. So there's there's been this back and forth whether or not Joe Button's career has made the podcast successful. And uh, so that was something that Joe Budden said. Look, he was Joe Budden, and because he was or is who he is, that's you know that's what it's all about. And it's his YouTube channel, and you know, uh, Roy and and Maul wanted ownership or partnership or wanted some percentage numbers, wanted accounting, wanted to know. You know, they're playing with words. They, they basically want to know what are the numbers like and, and are we getting paid what we're supposed to be getting paid. So they wanted to know, Roy especially, wanted to know based on the streams, based on the numbers, this uh, arrangement that we've worked out, this arrangement that we've agreed on, are we getting what we're supposed to be getting? That's what it all came down to. Joe Budden is offended by them even asking this. Joe Budden is offended that they asked this question. So he's so he's in his feelings about it. He's in his feelings, and they're in their feelings because he's mad that they're even asking the question. So he's being vague with his responses, and that's what's causing a lot of the uh, confusion between the camps. Should you be able to ask this question? Yeah, they should be able to ask the question. But um, uh, you know, it's 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 almost like asking a lady for a blood test for the child, right? Yeah, you can ask her, and yeah, you should ask her, but she is gonna feel a certain kind of way about it most of the time, not all the time. Anyway, uh, so that that's that I think is really the cause of it, and when you have a show that is named after 
one of the members and whether it's the founding member some of the uh, the co-stars tend to get in their feelings some of the co-stars tend to get in their feelings i've seen it happen to many a show but it but you have these kind of shows all the time because you have somebody who has a a higher marquee value name and you build the show around them in this instance he built the show joe button and he's had a a ever evolving cast of characters around him and i think that that's what fans of the show like i think fans of the show like that Joe Biden also claimed that he wants the aforementioned clip where he was firing them to be edited out of the episode. So he, he took it off, uh, I think, off of his uh, YouTube page and put it to his um, Patreon page, where it is something that people can subscribe to see. But uh, people that want to see it or hear it have heard it. Um, but uh, Button, Joe Biden said that ever since that last pod, I've just been having like pictures in my head of every moment that me and the guys ever had together it's joe button talking in retrospect when i say i didn't ask you to do nothing for me because i don't ask y'all to do nothing for me but that's a man thing to me you just don't ask men to do much stuff but when i said i didn't ask you to do something it don't mean i'm not appreciative it don't mean I'm not grateful. It means I just never asked. Um, so um, a lot of energy here. A lot of things going on. And uh, Joe Biden has a bigger platform, obviously, than the guys. I was expecting the guys to respond in some way. Being fired on the show is um, yeah, it's embarrassing. Uh, and... Um, I don't know if Joe Biden got the best end of this from the, from the standpoint of people looking at him like that's how you treat your friends. Right. And then, you know, I, I just I think that it could have been done in a more private manner. You wouldn't have got the, uh, the the viral nature of it had he done it in a private manner. But I don't think he was going for the viral moment. I think he was in his feelings. Joe is emotional from what we can see. And um, so he was he was mad and, and they're mad and every, everybody's mad. Uh, and when you have that kind of energy, so the energy has been off. And sometimes the energy is off on their show. Sometimes it's a good show. Sometimes it's not. Uh, but did did Joe come off like a like uh, an egomaniac? Eh, you can make an argument for both points. You can make an argument for both points. Um, the fact that he has over the last several years had multiple hosts co-hosts um you know there's a reason why but you got to look at it and say wow this this is um you know this is not necessarily a stable situation but they've been stable for many years i mean you have tv shows that don't have the run that they had uh so you know you can't say too much negative about it run you know shows go and and they go and they run their course TV shows. And so um every show is not going to stay together forever. I'm sure that The Breakfast Club has had issues, uh, but they've been able to stay together through throughout them. But they were all put together at the same time. This is Joe Button's show. So at the end of the day, because it's Joe Button's show, it's going to go the way he wants it to go. Uh and so anyway, today Maul and Roy host a response, host a response show, and um, is behind a paywall. You had to pay two dollars to see it, and, and that's fine. I think that's I think that's cool. Premium content, and and this is something that is uh, on on the uh, minds of the digital, the hip hop universe anyway, at the moment. So they're checking for this, and that's all good. So you, they put it behind this paywall. You pay two dollars, and you get to to uh, see the video. I I took time to uh, watch and listen to it. And um, one thing that I noticed is that th there's great chemistry between the two of them. Obviously, when we knew that, but Joe Budden's kind of in the middle of it, and um, both guys don't get to talk as much on Joe's podcast as much obviously as they did during 
uh, their response show. So I, I did I did like the energy. I thought it was good. I think they have something to work with there. I think that uh, they can move on past Joe Button and do their thing if they so choose. Joe kind of left it out there that maybe you know there's there's room for reconciliation. Like he kind of I don't think that they're gonna reconcile, but I'm just saying he kind of had some undertones like that. I think that these guys are gonna go off and do their own thing. Uh, I think that they voice and, and I don't think this needs to drag on too much longer. They said what they had to say. He said what he had to say. Um, do we have any different uh, impression of Joe Budden than we did before? I mean, no. We, many people thought that he was uh, an ass uh, before, and they probably still think that now, but he's in business, and um, uh, he's in business, and, and that's what you do. He's in, you, when you're doing business, you do business. Uh, and the volatile nature of of things, I thought at, at some point they were going to get into a fight at some point. So they just need to kind of do their own thing. And he needs to do his own thing. And whether it's uh, more of an input from Parks or uh, Ian or uh, the other guys that he had in their absence, somebody, you know, some somebody. Um, DJ Cool Ross said, ain't nobody checking for Roy Moore. I mean, okay, yes. We don't know them. Uh, if it wasn't for Joe Button, we would not know them. Yeah, that is true. Okay, is it going to be the same level of, of, of exposure as they would get with Joe Button? No. But I mean, they can't go back to they can't go back to Joe Button podcast and still keep their uh <laughs> reputation intact. And uh, if, if academics has anything to do with it, they, no, they have no reputation. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, of course, they're not as popular as Joe Button, you know. But, I mean, what are they going to do? Like they should try to do their own thing, right? I mean, Rod. Uh, and uh, second time. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the second time that it that it's happened. Uh, and uh, But this one is, was worse. This one was worse. This one was worse. Um, to me, surprisingly, the duel was entertaining. I thought they were entertaining. Um, I really would need to see them discuss other topics. Of course, they're discussing something that they're passionate about, something that just happened, and and uh, a beef between themselves and Joe Button. So that that was entertaining, at least because we wanted to hear what he had to say and and what Maul had to say. Um, but uh, I don't think that there's ever going to be a recovery from this from the standpoint of them having a a show together if so then i mean you can just say anything just anything just anything i mean it was there was a lot joe button saying that maul lived with him and uh maul taking offense to that obviously uh and roy taking offense to being called uh you know i guess not being valued I, i think that uh, business, as I said, will go on. Joe Bud and his podcast network is going to prosper. Rory and Maul, they have a future in podcasting. Is it going to be to the degree of Joe Button, <laughs> as a, a DJ Cool Raw pointed out? No, it's not going to be to that degree. Uh, but they got they got to do something. So you, you can check out the trailer uh, of it, and they they called it. I'll name this response later. And that was obviously a shot at Joe. Longtime listeners of the show know that initially Joe Button podcast was called I'll name this show later. Uh, so this is their I'll, I'll name this response later. Uh, interesting. It was clever. Uh, a little bit over an hour long. So uh, that is something that you can uh, check out. And I think that you should check it out. If, if you're a fan of the show, if you're not a fan of the show, then, you know, you could you could care less. Right. Uh, if you're not a fan of the show, uh, you could care less. So um, Joe Budden, who is pretty active on Twitter, uh, he had, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of um, things to say. He even shared their video, which I thought was uh, um, interesting. 
One, one, one Twitter user told Joe that you looking funny in the light, Joe Button. And uh, Joe Button responded, uh, make it brighter. <laughs> right. Um, but there, there is uh, a lot of energy out there. There's, there's a lot of energy out there. And uh, uh, what comes next for the Joe Button podcast? Does he start having more guests on the show? Should that, should that be the direction that they go? Like more guests, like, uh, you know, rappers, entertainers, that, that type. More people stopping by the show. Is that the move? Should he? Should should they go to therapy? I I thought that the picture that they showed when they went to therapy was crazy. Uh, they, they there was a, a attempted therapy session at one point in time. Mm. I, I didn't know I didn't know what to make of it. Uh, and then the guys returned. Uh, so we've seen Joe Buttons firing of the uh, duo. We've seen, or if you've had a chance to check out their response, they said the response that you pretty much would expect. And uh, there was a lot of um, hurt feelings from both sides. Somebody else said that Joe Button thought the therapist was going to save him. True colors showing. His true colors showing. Uh, another user said that they are exposing your stuff, man. And Joe Budden said, no, you just stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, somebody else said, that, uh, uh, yo, Joe Budden, tell your therapist to send me her invoice. I felt like I was at therapy too. Wow. Yeah, that's um, that's interesting. Somebody else said that this is probably the best episode of the podcast throughout all of this. Thank you for bringing your therapist, Joe Button. Therapist shows me how everything better when you have money. His therapist was active, intelligent, and insightful. I didn't know that was possible. Not joking. Genuinely stunned uh, people embracing the therapy. Uh, and you know, Joe Biden is somebody who's always talked about therapy, going to therapy, participating in therapy, 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 therapy. Some people need therapy. Got people in my family that uh, that actively pursue therapy. I'm not that person. Maybe later I will be. Maybe, maybe at some point in time, but currently, right now, no, I'm not that. I'm not the therapy person. I'm usually able to walk through these things. Uh, these two guys think they're more important than Joe. DJ Cool Rod said that. And that may be what Joe Budden is feeling. And, and one thing's for sure. Let me say this, because I don't want people to, to, to feel like I'm really, you know, my thing is, is that sometimes things don't work out. And yes, they have an inflated sense of importance. Uh, they think that we did this. Maul pointed out that in different towns that they went to that, that Joe Button wasn't selling it out with his music. So it, so if they're selling out now, uh, then it's got to be us that are doing this. And um, I would point out to Maul that the size of the venues that they did their podcast in versus the size of the venues that Joe was doing his performances at were probably different, different, you know, different. There's a whole different thing. But let me say this. I mean, yeah. They're definitely not more important than Joe Button because the show is going to go on without them. The show, the show is going uh, to go on without them. I just hate people putting all the dirty, you got to put all the dirty laundry. On. <laughs> like, like, and I think that they were, they threw, they threw some warning shots out there. Like, oh, you really want us to go in? We can really go in. We can talk about stuff that you hide. And like, there was, there was a lot of uh, references uh, Sean Payne says, "Just tough to watch either way." It was, uh, it was definitely tough to watch. I felt like we were, you know, sitting in on an argument between some friends, and we're at somebody's house, and it's just, it's about to get crazy. Nobody, nobody really knows how crazy things are going to get between the uh, the friends, and, and you hate to see, you know, that, that's your man. Like, what are you doing? That's your homie, man. Like, you know what I mean? Um, there was a lot of talk about uh, 
Roy supposedly challenging Joe Budden to a fight. And uh, Roy kind of, you know, says that it wasn't serious and you started it kind of thing. And Joe Button, how many uh, places can you work and you're going to, uh, uh, you know, just offer a fight to your boss. They, they, they look at themselves as partners, Roy and Maul. Joe Budden says that you guys work here. And, uh, and I think that that is the source of the issue. They said that is a source of issue. Okay, so uh, Feast says I got something wrong. That's false. They said they know how much uh, Button is worth uh, to the pod, but it's the percentage base. They know that. And, and see, that is the that is the source of the problem, right? So they they said two things, and both things can't be true at the same time. They said that they know how much he's worth, right? Then on the other hand, Maul pointed out that you wasn't selling out shows, and and you didn't. Um, uh, you know, have the crowd wrapped around the building. We did, right? So, um, if they're saying, you know, if you're saying that, which they did say they know what he's worth, but on one hand they say that, but on the other hand, you know, they're acting, they're acting different. And then Maul really, you saw this on that last episode that they did together. Maul really was in his feelings because Joe Biden wanted to do a show wanted to continue the show and, and had some other guys filling in. This is not the attitude of people that know how much button is worth because it wouldn't have been no attitude. They think that there's no show without them. They think it's no show without them. And, and there is a show without them. And because they were around Joe button, they can do a show themselves. I think that they proved that Maul was just explaining how much him and Roy are worth and they're worth a lot. Okay. Um, now I think that, that I think that is true. Now I think that what it is becomes how much are they worth? They will them leaving the show, the Joe Button podcast is not going to end the show. So they may be worth a lot, but they're they're not worth more than the show, right? We did, uh, we did as in all together, all four of them. Okay. And uh, what else? Because Joe lied. <laughs> did you listen carefully, brother? Okay. What did, what did Joe lie about that? You know, everything is, is, um, is perspective. So what did, I don't know what, what Joe lied about. Okay. Uh, what do you say? Not trying to sound condescending, by the way. No, no, no. I, I'm not taking it as as condescending. I'm reading some of the uh, reading some of the comments from um, Feast, uh, Feast of Stoic. Okay, so what did Joe Budden lie about? Because <laughs> I don't understand that. Uh, if Maul came in the first, or Roy rather came in within the first five or six episodes, and Maul came later, what that? The show already existed. It was moving on. And yes, it was a work in progress. Uh, they got it together and they've been getting different checks. Different businesses have been made. And this happens frequently. Sometimes people forget. Sometimes people forget how things come about. Sometimes because whoever is the, is the head guy or the head girl doesn't bash it down their throat. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Sometimes people feel like they're all on equal footing. And that's not the case. They're not on equal footing. It's like what the Steve Harvey morning show or, or uh, uh, you know, what any other show, one of those shows that, that are built around a comedian, they have a whole cast, a Ricky Smiley show. You know what I mean? Uh, Jamie Foxx had one and you have a whole cast of characters, but it's named after the most popular person. Right. This is very similar to that. It's like a hip hop version of that, a podcast version of that. None of those guys. It, it's it's not it, it's not even Joe Budden and friends. It's the Joe Budden podcast. So it's he's the most important person. So it's, it's whatever he says at the end of the day and whether he does some grimy things to his friends, that could be debated. But it's still his platform to do it. It's still his platform to do it. Uh, and um, Cool Rod said that Roy and Maul didn't bring anything to the table. Maul is supposed to be tied to Jay Z, and Roy is a concert promoter. Loose ends. 
Now, let me say this about Cool Rod. Cool Rod is not feeling Roy and Maul at all. He's, he's supposed to be tied to Jay-Z. Um, I like the energy. What I really liked about the show, uh, the the most recent version of the show, because we don't know what's going to happen in the in the programs to come. But it, what I liked is it felt like homeboys just talking. And 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 guys love those kind of conversations where you just at, at your homie's house or they at your house and y'all watching the game or y'all listening to some music or y'all playing video games or whatever y'all eating, whatever you whatever you doing, you get ready to go to the club, whatever. And y'all just having those conversations about music, about your relationships, about whatever's happening in the world. Those conversations, almost like barbershop talk. It's, it's almost like that. I enjoyed that conversation. I enjoyed that camaraderie that they had. And, and we were able to witness that. And it just so happened that the friendship imploded. And we ain't going to get to see that no more. <laughs> Not for them. According to Maul, Joe lied about them going their separate ways, uh, going to their corners. Yeah. Um, Feast is saying that, and and yes, uh, everybody's interpretation of it is kind of different. Um, you know, it, it is kind of different. And uh, so, what is he saying? He's saying, I think that people are missing the point. Rory and Maul never said anything about ownership. Uh, if you're making percentage based, I'm sure gets the most out of it, uh, but that's what it is, it's a partnership. Um, if, okay, so it's a partnership based on who, so you can feel like you should be a partner, right? Let's look at DMX and the Rough Riders. Okay. DMX felt like he should be a partner in Rough Riders and he, he was the marquee artist. He was the biggest artist that they had. He was there from the beginning. He claims DMX claimed that. DN Wall said that he was supposed to be a partner in Rough Riders. And they got some big checks. And when it came down to it, they did not make him a partner. He was mad. He felt that he should have been a partner, right? And he made the case for partnership, just like Roy and Maul are making the case for partnership. However, DN Wall own Rough Riders, right? It's their thing. They'll decide if he's the partner. He they said he wasn't. He went on to start Bloodline Records. I personally wish that they had made him a partner. I think it may possibly could have extended Rough Riders run, or maybe it could have ended it even faster. I don't know. I wish that they could have made it work. He didn't. But like I said, DMX was, was DNY wrong? No. It's what they wanted to do. And it was their thing. And so what his contribution, DMX contribution was, did not make him a partner. And do you think that DMX contributed more to Rough Riders than Maul and Roy contributed to the Joe Button podcast. Yes, DMX contributed more, and he still wasn't a partner. You can't make yourself a partner by what you do. It's in the structure of the of the foundation, and the foundation was Joe Button. The foundation was Joe Button. You know what I'm saying? Now, DMX contribution. DMX, er, Roy and Maul. <laughs> It's not, I don't even know. It's not even e equatable. But I'm just trying to say from the standpoint of the partnership. So at any point, I mean, the, we could do LL Cool J in Def Jam. You know what I mean? LL felt a certain kind of way that he wasn't in uh, that position that they put Jay-Z in. He was there from day one, or at least day two, LL Cool J. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, my man Cool Rod says that Roy and Maul were boring. They didn't open up about themselves and try to uh, be politically correct with answers. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think that um, D uh, DJ uh, Cool Rod, I don't think they were trying to be entertaining per se, But and you're right. And we, we're we not going to be able to see how entertaining they can be until we see them talk about other things, right? They're only talking about this blow up with Joe Button. And you're right. They were not revealing. They were very politically correct. Uh, and, um, and like I said, they, they threw some warning shots out there. They threw some warning shots out there, uh, to Joe button. And I, I think that it's over, <laughs> uh, feast said, good point. I see what you're saying. Oh, definitely. Thank you. My brother. Uh, I think that we've pretty much seen what we're going to see. Maybe some little things here and there. 
and maybe some little things here and there. But for the most part, I think that they're they're done with that. Do you want to see this trio back together, not including Parks and that, right? Um, do you want to see this trio back together? I say no. I say no because there's some things that you can't come back from. And if they do come back from it, then I think we're going to look at everybody different. Like, what, like what's really going on with these guys? I think that it's over. And, and it should be over. End of an era. Yes. Enjoyed the show. Yes. Everybody needs to move on to different things. And um, uh, Roy and Maul are definitely not. They're not. They don't have the personality of Joe. But Joe like anybody joe joe needs somebody to bounce uh uh you know conversation off of and they do too whether they need another personality to come in uh, a bigger personality is possible but i think they should just stay with them you say no okay he says no he says it won't happen and i agree it will not happen uh it shouldn't happen that's that's for damn sure it should not happen man but it was it was a it was a hell of a run. It was it was a hell of a run. Uh, it's got some, we got some music to review later on tonight. We're gonna review some music. We have uh, some songs to get into. A lot a lot of a uh, lot of things coming out in the um, foreseeable future. Summertime is coming, so we got new music coming out, and we definitely have music that dropped on Friday. Uh, so a little bit later tonight, we are going to review some of these tunes let me know what songs you want to review but i i have some things 21 savage migos Nicki minaj drake wayne it's a lot of things kodak black that we want to get into and we're going to do that a little bit later let's do this we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back to getting some of these uh music things <laughs> 